Here's how to turn 1,000 into 1 million through wholesaling real estates. Now listen, this is not a get rich quick. This is not an overnight success, but it'll be over time. I'm gonna show you a skill set that you can depend on for the rest of your life. Intro. Step one, the freeway. Drive around your city, look for rundown houses, and take down the property address, and I'll show you what to do next. Or you can call down to your local title company and ask them for a pre-foreclosure list, all right, that you can call. These are motivated individuals that are willing to sell their property to you at a discount, but you're not going to buy the property. I'll show you exactly what you do. Or you can go down to your county courthouse and ask for a tax lien and a code violation list. Or you can sign up for this website and get a seven days free trial with my affiliate link. I'll leave it in the descriptions. And here is the list that you're going to pull. Step two, you're going to take the list that you pull or have gathered over to this website to skip trace to find the owner phone number. So out of the thousand bucks, we're going to spend $900 to skip trace to find the owner phone number. Step three, you're going to call them up and offer to buy their property using this formula. ARV minus 30% minus the repair minus whatever you want to make equal the offer price to this property owner. All right. ARV stands for after repair value. What does the property worth in a perfect condition? 30% is the typical discount that a investor, a cash buyer would want to buy the property at to make uh, their return on the investment. All right. The repair is what does it cost to fix the property up, to put in perfect condition, and then your fee, whatever you want to make, 5, 10, 20, 30, whatever the amount is. Step four, once you and the seller have agreed on a price, what you're gonna do is you're gonna send out what's called a purchase and sell agreement. Shoot me a text to that phone number and I'll hook you up with the purchase and sell agreement, the contract, all for free. Then you're gonna upload that contract using this website here, okay, for them to actually sign the contract electronically. So the key thing here is the contract. The contract gives you equitable interest, which means as a potential buyers to the property, you can assign the contract to another buyer for a profit if you don't want to move forward to buy the property. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to find a cash buyer, another buyer that's willing to pay us more for what we got under contract for. And then we're just going to sign the contract, our rights to buy the property over to them for a profit. Now in the contract, there is a inspection contingent. So as a buyer, we have what's called an inspection contingent. So which means within a time period that we have agreed with the seller, all right, that we get to inspect the property to see if we still want to move forward to buy the property. So in this case, if we can't find a buyer, okay, you can actually call the seller up, cancel it, walk away, scratch free and get your earnest money deposit back. Step number five, you're going to take that contract and you're going to send it to a local title company that knows how to do these transactions. Typically, it has to be an investor friendly title company that knows how to deal with assignment wholesale transaction. All right. You're going to take that contract. You can email it. You're going to fax it. You can drop it off to them, whatever you need to do along with the earnest money deposit. So in this case, out of the thousand dollars, we're going to take a hundred bucks and we're going to put it down as an earnest money deposit with the sellers to make sure that contract becomes legit because Without the without a deposit of any kind of the money, it could be one dollar, ten dollar, to a hundred bucks. Without an exchanging money, that contract is not valid. Which means the seller can back out. You can't do anything. Okay. Once you drop off the money, that contract becomes legit. It bounces you and the seller to the contract. Okay. So they can't sell it behind your back until that contract is expired. Now, um, you're going to get what's called, S you're going to open escrow with that title company, okay? And here's what you're going to do next. Step number six is to find a buyer for your wholesale deal, and here is how you're going to do it. One of the ways you jump onto Craigslist in the real estate sections, punching We Buy Houses, and all these investors, probably wholesaler is going to pop up, and then you're going to call them, and you're going to pitch them your deal, all right, and see if you can get them, all right, either to find you a buyer for your deal or 
an investor that actually buy fix and flip property to buy the property for $20,000 more than what you got in the contract for. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to use $20,000 as an example, but it could be any amount that you are able to get the seller to agree and make a profit in between. Or you can also use some of these websites to find a buyer for your deal, okay? You can post your deal on Facebook Marketplace. You can post your deal on the local RIA, okay? You can also search in there to find up investor cash buyer for your deal. Or you can also Google, Google We Buy Houses, and two things gonna happen. One is another wholesaler website is gonna pop up, or two, the Asher investors looking to fix and flip the property, okay? And that's how they promote uh, their business, is by buying Google, right? Google ads or a pay per click, all right, to, to rank their website, or social media, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, all right, Twitter, all right? Any in or LinkedIn, any social media that you can think of, maybe you can go there and try to find your buyers for the deal. Step number seven, once you find a buyer, you're going to send them what's called an assignment agreement. You're going to sign the contract over to them for a profit, whatever the amount is, okay? You're going to use an assignment contract. Once again, text, it, text me to that phone number and I'm going to hook you up with all the contract you need to actually get this done. And you can also use that website right there to send the document over to them to get electronic signature. Step number eight is that you're gonna take the assignment agreement that the buy have signed, you're gonna send it into that same title company that you send the purchase and sale agreement in, all right, for them to actually close on the property. And you also wanna make sure that your buyer is gonna drop off a non-refundable deposit. Make sure you have a, them to have as much skin in the game as possible, all right? So I typically like to get from my buyer where I'm at at least five Gs. But listen, it could be 1,000, 2,000, but you gotta at least make sure that the buyer uh, deposit, all right, needs to cover the earnest money that you have with the seller. So in case if the buyer backs out of the deal for whatever reason, they lose their deposit and you can take their deposit, you can pay the seller, all right, all right, to either extend the contract to buy you more time or cancel the contract, but now you're able to pay the seller so that way they're not upset because, hey, you back out, so you're going to lose your deposit with the seller and the, the buyer deposit is enough to cover that fee for you. Very important. Step number nine is that now you're just going to wait for the title company, all right, to close on with the seller. Step number nine is now you're just going to wait for the title company, all right, to close on the deal, and then they'll get you paid. they either going to wire you the fund or send you a cashier check, whichever way that you want to receive your money, okay? And you're going to get your deposit back as well. And I know a lot of you have questions about who pay for the closing costs. So the buyers typically pay for all the closing costs, so there's nothing needs to come out of your pocket. But whatever it is that is agreed upon, all right, between you and the seller needs to transfer over to the buyer. Step number 10 is just rinse and repeat, doing it all over again. Now imagine doing that five times a month, making $20,000 per deal. That is $100,000 a month, $1.2 million a year. Boom! Once again, this is not a get rich quick, okay? But this is a skill set that will make you money over and over and over again. The best investment that you can ever made is into yourself and learning a skill, okay? Or a trades that you know that you can depend on yourself to go out there and make the money over and over and over and over again. So don't take the baby money that you have. 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 and diversify a little bit into stocks, a little bit into crypto and a little bit into maybe into your business. But you should focus on taking that baby money and go all in into yourself, master a skills, build a business out of it. Okay. Because that's exactly what I did. I learned how to wholesale. Once I master it, then I build a business. Then I reinvest the money I, I, I make back into my business. Then it pumps me so much cash every single month. Then now I take that money and I'm now ready to take risks, where, which means I got play money that I can afford to lose, where I take that money and now I invest it into crypto. But so many of you are getting distracted and there's so much noise that you are diversifying your baby money a little bit into stocks, a little bit into crypto, and a little bit into whatever business you're doing, and nothing is growing really big to the point where it can actually change your life. Okay, so listen to me. To change your life financially and become financially free, you must focus on building a skill set first. A high income skills that you can depend on because you can depend on the market. Okay? 
Okay, but you can depend on yourself because once you have learned the skills, if regardless of the market, regardless of where you are, regardless if you lose everything, you have the skills now to make that money over and over and over again. You see, that is the key to, be, to getting from where you are to where you want to be. But when you have learned a high income skills, you can actually teach other people to do it, like your families, your friends, or even pass it down to your kid. But when you are gambling into like Dogecoin or anything else, how can you, how can you teach them? Basically, you're just betting on something and trying to get lucky. Okay, now if you want to be a day trader, you know, you still have to learn the skills, right? It takes skills. I'm talking about people that just take their money and put into some random things because they heard it on social media. That is gambling, okay? Anything that you want is going to be for sure is you have to learn a skills that you know that it's going to help you make that money over and over and over again and you're not depending on luck. Luck can only take you so far. It's the skills that pays the bills, my friend. To the moon we go, baby, and let's go get this money. <laughs>